Somebody says, there you go again, Donald Trump. What can I do? He became president. If he hadn't become president, I'd never mention his name. But he's in the middle of any story, any story that's going to tell the, 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 what happened in, the, in, in, in this part of the 21st century is going to include Donald Trump as a symptom of a much wider phenomenon. And I think the first real consequence beyond Barack Obama's presidency, the real long-term consequence, the real damaging long-term consequence of the misdiagnosis of the financial crisis and the adoption of the idea of inequality as a real problem, the adoption of the idea that the middle class has stagnated the first real consequence is the election of Donald Trump. I think the second big political consequence is the rise and the, 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 um, the adoption of moral confidence by the progressive or regressive left, by not just the, the identity politics, the, 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 the crap that goes on on campuses, the the kind of left that, that complains about gender and about race and all of that, but now the socialist left, the statist left, the left that in economic policy wants to regulate control and tax capitalism to death. They have become emboldened. They have become stronger. They have become popular. And now there's no real disagreement between them and many on the right. Take again Tucker Carlson, who just expresses vicious hatred for people like Jeff Bezos, hatred for companies like Walmart, hatred for the idea of billionaires. The failure to defend capitalism, the failure to identify what capitalism is in 2008, the failure to morally condemn the Occupy Wall Street movement, the failure to morally condemn and factually condemn the inequality fanatics, the inequality purveyors of fear, has led not only to the disaster that is the Trump presidency, but is ultimately going to lead us, it's going to lead us to Elizabeth Warren or to some future nutty, crazy, leftist presidency. And there's no opposition, no real opposition, just as there was no opposition to the idea that capitalism caused the 2008 Great Recession. So what would we have had to say back then? What would we have to say today if we are going to defend ourselves against AOC, if we're going to defend ourselves against Elizabeth Warren, and at the end of the day, if we're going to defend ourselves against Tucker Carlson, well, first, we must unequivocally state that we have no capitalism in the world today. The 2008 couldn't have been caused by capitalism because there was no capitalism. Not if capitalism means free market. If capitalism means freedom from coercion, freedom from regulations, freedom from control, freedom from the government running the economy, there was no capitalism before the financial crisis. The financial crisis could not have. We can argue about what exactly did cause the financial crisis, but it could not have been caused by free markets because it is exactly those areas that went bust, mortgages, housing, rating agencies that are most controlled, most regulated, least capitalistic. But that we don't have capitalism at all. When you're taxing wealthy people at 37.6%, that is not capitalism. When you've got thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of regulations, that is not Capitalism. When 150 
government employees, government bureaucrats, government regulators go to work every single day at J.P. Morgan, signing off on every decision one of the great American banks makes. That is not capitalism. So, over and over and over again, we have to make the case. Yeah, there are problems today. <laughs> the economy screwed up. People are being left behind. There is a lot of unfairness in the economy today. There's a lot that should be different. And the reason for the problems is not capitalism because we don't have it. Indeed, we have to make the case that the reason for the problems is statism, government intervention, government control. That that's what caused the financial crisis, and that's what makes things worse, and that's what, to the extent that the middle class is held back, that's what's holding them back. To the extent that there are people who are struggling in America today to make a living while working full-time jobs? That's not capitalism. That's statism, which constrains our ability to raise the productivity of labor and therefore raise wages appropriately. It's, capitalism, it's, it's statism that restricts our ability to distribute capital to its most productive uses. And then limits the availability of capital by taxing. It is regulations that restrict the ability of innovations and, and, and progress on a, large scale, on a large scale that hold wages down. It's not capitalism. Capitalism is a system in which productivity explodes and as a consequence, wages explode with it. And you can see it. You can see it in the regulated segments of the economy versus the unregulated segments in the economy. You can see it in the, how, how productivity, how fast it goes up, how much it improves, how much changes there are in the various sectors. So the first case that has to be made is that capitalism, we don't have it. And that to the extent that we move towards capitalism, many of the so-called problems that exist go away. And to the extent that we move away from them, we only, only reinforce those problems. The second argument we have to make is that indeed inequality is not a problem. It's not a problem economically. There's no theory that suggests that it is. And importantly, it's not a problem morally. And here, the key point we have to make throughout, all the time, nonstop, is that somebody's need is not a claim against everybody else. Somebody's need is not a claim against those who have. It's not a claim against those who are productive. Somebody's need is not, does not create a moral necessity on you to satisfy that need. We have to advocate from the position of a morality of self-interest. We cannot accept the need as a claim. Once you accept that, it's over. They win. And of course, this is why Republicans must lose, because they've accepted that need is a standard of value. Again, look at Tucker Carlson. 